Yellow Jacket football fans, and welcome to the Yellow Jacket football show. I'm Carl Gurgis, and I'll be joined in a few moments by Coach James Gage. But before we get into that, Coach, let's see here. Three in a row, and last uh, Friday night it was the Jackets 36, A-Leaf l 20. Uh, let's just keep it going as far as it might as well as we got three in a row going here. It does, Carl. You know, it seems just like yesterday we were over here talking about our win against Dulles last year. And, uh, you know, here we are in 2021, and uh, we've gotten off to a great start so far this year. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a lot of fun up to this point. And it's offense and it's defense. They're all contributing. Yes, sir. They, uh, it's been a total team game. Special teams Special have been teams, really, really right. well for us. You know, we've scored a couple of defensive touchdowns. We're spreading the ball all over the field offensively. So uh, it's been really fun the first four weeks of the season. Well, it's a happy camp when you win, and uh, let's just keep it up this coming Friday night. We'll be back with highlights of this past Friday's game with Elsick, and stay tuned. Well, Coach, let's get right into it. Yellow Jackets 36, A-Leaf Hellstick 20, and you really passed it around. We did. Uh, played really, really well the other night uh, from, from start to finish. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of kids that got in the game, <coughs> and a lot of kids made plays. You know, we, we had a lot of highlights. So anytime you go back and watch the film on Saturday morning and, uh, you know, break it down and, and have as many highlights as we had last week. It was always a good Friday night for you. It was, and for Saturday's even better since you got to watch it again. It's a lot easier waking up Saturday morning after a win, for that's, that's for sure. And I know you've got a lot of highlights, so why don't we get right into that at this time? Okay. All right, so this was early on in the game. Uh, this was a, we, we kind of got backed up a little bit. I think it was second and 10, second and 11. Uh, we get the ball pitched to Cole Ernt. Uh, you know, he was a fullback for us. We've moved him to running back just to get us a little bit of speed. And he's really kind of learned the position. So uh, gets a great block out here by Daniel Bloom, uh, who's really come on and, and had a heck of a year for us so far. But, uh, you know, we felt like we were going to be able to hurt Elsick a little bit with the option game. And uh, Trevor Bokel is each, each game he's getting better and better as far as reading it and pitching it and when to run and doing all that. And then our offensive line is just each game getting better and better as well. You can tell that four or five yards downfield, the offensive linemen. Yes, sir. They're, they're, they're playing extremely hard. Uh, you know, they're controlling the line of scrimmage right now, and, and, and then they're, they're hustling downfield, looking to get blocks downfield. So this was, uh, you know, we went three and out to start the game. Elsick goes down and scores, uh, missed the extra point. So they're up six to nothing. This was our very next drive. Um, and this was a big play for us. It was a, it was a chance for us to bounce back and, and get right back in the ball game. So, uh, you know, you see the great block right there on the perimeter by our receiver, John Hoffman. Our receivers blocked well all night the other night. And then you see Daniel Bloom again, number 16 going in motion, gets an outstanding block downfield right here. Boom, cuts the guy down. And then Deshaun Peterson, who's having an unbelievable year for us right now, uh, you know, shows a little bit of speed. He, he went out and ran track last year. And, uh, he showed off a little bit of that track speed once he got around the edge. So, 52 yards. Yes, sir. So uh, obviously an explosive play for us. So anytime you get an explosive play, uh, you, you got to be thrilled about that. So again, here we go, uh, running the option. And, and Trevor Bokel does a great job pulling it and pitching it right there. Uh, you know, they took, they try to take the fullback out of, out of it and the option to, uh, on the option game. And so when they do that, we feel good enough that Trevor can pull it. And if he has to pitch it, we feel good enough about our running backs to be able to pitch it on the perimeter and then get great blocks. You see Palermo does a great job running his guy off and then getting just enough of him right there to open up a little hole for Daniel to get the run through. You know, if you, if you showed him the uh, game with Stratford and you showed him this game, you could really see a, a distinct uh, improvement. No doubt. And, and Trevor started about four or five games for us last year. Uh, but but he never really was the guy the whole year. So so far this year he's been the guy. He's taken that and uh, he's run with it. And, and each game he's getting better and better. So we're we're looking for continual improvement out of him. And uh, we hope just as the year goes on he continues to get better. All right. So. Uh, you know, we, we, we sat down and we talked this summer about one thing we wanted to do a little bit more of this year. We wanted to add a little bit more power game to, to what we were doing offensively. And so we've got the option game we feel like is really uh, taking off and doing some really good things. And now we, we feel like with our power game, uh, it's added another dimension to our offense. And so uh, this is a play that we call smash. And uh, we, we pitch it to Daniel Bloom. We get a great kick out of our fullback, Deshaun, there. A great job by Jordan Torres sealing it off. And then we tell those running backs, if you can ever find that backside cut, you got a chance for a big play. So 
Uh, Daniel found that backside cut for a big play and, uh, you know, gets us down into scoring position. I think we scored two plays later, so uh, sets up a big touchdown for us. Good offensive blocking at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hear Mesa, sophomore guard, gets around. Uh, we, you know, in this play, we want our quarterback and guard getting in the hole together. So anytime you can get both of those guys hip to hip going in the hole, you got a chance for a good play. And, uh, we, we feel like, uh, you know, those two guys got in the hole and, and, and got just enough of their guys to open up that lane for Daniel to run through. All right, so again, the same play, just out of a different formation. You can see we get a great down block by the play side offensive line and tight ends. You get a guard quarterback through, clean, there it is right there, open up the hole. And, uh, that's one thing that we pride in, uh, pride ourselves on is uh, we want our running backs running downhill. And uh, Daniel takes the pitch here from, from Trevor, and he heads downhill. You know, he he, he, nobody touched him in the blue until he was in the end zone. Yes, sir. So uh, anytime, again, you get your guard and quarterback through a hole like that clean, uh, get a great kick by Deshaun there, uh, we feel like we got a good play. And so we, we ran this play, uh, I don't know, probably 12 to 15 times the other night. And uh, we just kept running it because, you know, we, it was working. What so, if it ain't? ain't if it's not broke, broke don't, don't fix, fix it. it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. So, uh, but but great job executing. Anytime you score touchdowns, it's exciting, uh, and that's one thing we preach to our kids is when we get down there on the goal line, we got to be 100% touchdowns. We don't. We like we like points, but we want six points instead of three. Same play the other side. There you yep. go. This time we pitch it to uh, R.J. Jarvis. Comes in. And again, you see we got our, our Dashiell Foster gets through this time as a right guard, picks up a big block, and Trevor gets just enough of that safety to where uh, RJ can find a little crease. And again, they're heading downhill, 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 and that's what we like. Cole Ernst gets a good job washing everything down right there. Uh, you know, but the, the exciting thing for me is seeing our kids celebrate together. And, uh, the film kind of cuts off, but uh, when, when our kids are celebrating in the end zone together, that, that's fun to see as a coach. And RJ had a good option there. He kept cut in yes, sir. when the outside was covered. Yes, sir. So, and, and all of our backs were, are back from last year, so they're all smart. They know the offense, um, and, and every time they run the ball, they're getting better and better. So this was uh, right after a fumble. Christian Montavo recovered a fumble, and uh, to start the second half, it was 29 to six at the time, and uh, we felt like, hey, let's we got a chance to hurt them again with our option game. We talked about it at halftime, so uh, we got in a little bit of a different formation than they were used to seeing, but. Uh, at the end of the day, it was it was our option game, and, and again, Trevor reads it correctly. We get an outstanding block by Elijah Harris out there on the perimeter, and uh, our receivers again blocked well all night long. Uh, Daniel gets another uh, good block where he doesn't really get the guy, but he makes the guy go underneath him. So, uh, you know, just a really really well executed play right there. Well, at my youth, I know I could have run through that. Yeah, if you give us a big <laughs> enough hole, we we we'll challenge anybody. We want we want, we want anybody to run through them. So. All right, switching over to the defensive side of the ball. Um, early on, uh, Liam Binger had a play for us this week. Our, our starting outside linebacker, Easton Winfield, broke his hand. And so Liam stepped in and, and, and helped us play really, really well. Gets enough of the guy to hold him up and then rally the troops. I think that's Marshall Garcia coming through. Uh, Gavin Guthrie's in there. Larry Bahachek's in there. But uh, just one thing we've been preaching on defense is run to the football, run to the football and then let's create turnovers. And a lot of white jerseys. A lot of white jerseys. So that's that's a good play for us. Anytime we can get eight, nine, 10 hats to the ball, that's a, that's a successful play for us. All right, so have a little pressure look here. Uh, Wyatt Stinson comes through A-gap. We confused him a little bit up front and, and Wyatt comes free. Uh, A-gap, I believe, and uh, gets, shows our, excuse me, B-gap and shows off a little bit of speed and gets the jet wide receiver uh, by the shoulder and gets enough of him and, and has that strong grip uh, to be able to bring him down. So, uh, you know, for us, that's a that's a minus three yard play for us. But again, Wyatt makes the play, but if if you, if you go another second after the play's over, there's five or six white yeah. hats coming over there. As Does well. Wyatt know he's that fast or y'all tell him? Yeah, we, we, we have to, we have to kind of <laughs> tell him a little bit, hey, you're faster than what you're playing sometimes, but uh, you know, he, he did, he showed great play, great instinct right there, and a good, good job getting the football and then wrapping up. Okay, again, bringing some pressure off the edge. Uh, Marshall Garcia picks up the block, and Gavin Guthrie comes right off the edge. We felt like this should have been a uh, intentional grounding. 
Uh, they told us there was a receiver in the area, and we're, we're still looking for where he's at. But, uh, you know, great job. Anytime you can force the quarterback uh, to get rid of it when he's not ready, that's a good, pl a good play for us. And uh, Gavin's done a great job all year coming off the edge and uh, doing this to quarterbacks. He's, he's good for about one or two of those a game. Uh, just great instincts coming off the edge, timing it up. But, uh, again, just a great job by our defense getting pressure on the quarterback and great job on the back end. You can't see it, but the back end guys <laughs> covered him up as well. Uh, not allow the quarterback to get rid of it. Yeah, give him a sack, even though they said it was incomplete. You know, that's what we're, we'll, we'll, we'll put it in the stat book. All right, so this was late in the half. They were trying to uh, go down for a quick score. We were up uh, 22 to six at the time. So they had a chance to get right back in the ball game. And uh, Carson Robel, that makes an outstanding play. He played really, really well the other night. Uh, that, that wide receiver number seven was a big, good-looking kid, physical. And uh, Carson went man coverage with him all night long and uh, limited him to a couple of short, easy catches, but never gave up the big pass. And uh, did an outstanding job breaking on the ball here, knocking it out of his hand, and uh, giving us another chance to uh, you know, play some more defense. But, but an outstanding job, for sure, uh, by Carson Robel on this play. All right, so this was the last play of the half. Uh, they actually called a timeout with seven seconds to go. Uh, we told our kids this is gonna be the last play of the half. They're gonna throw it up uh, and try to score on us. Uh, so don't let them behind you. We, we get enough pressure on the quarterback to where he has to throw it off his back foot before he's ready and uh, under throws the ball a little bit. And uh, Carson Robel there, 95 yard touchdown. I think that's uh, Marshall Garcia causing the pressure. 95-yard uh, touchdown run, second longest, second longest in Alvin right. history. But you see also right Good there, blocking. Marshall Garcia gets an outstanding block on the quarterback. Jimmy Beasley gets an, a great block on that lineman. I'm not sure the lineman would have caught him, but Jimmy made sure that he wasn't going to catch him. And then you see Gavin Guthrie running down the field, uh, lead blocking for him as well. So uh, just an outstanding play. We kick the extra point. We end up going up 29-6 to at halftime instead of 22-6. to So a huge play for the Alvin Yellow Jackets and it gave us a lot of momentum going into the second half. So Jimmy is 70-something? Yes, sir, 77 he right there. He has never run that fast in his life. I don't you know, know. We, we tell them all the time when they're conditioning, you can run harder, you can run harder. Now we got visual proof that, yes, you can yeah. run a little bit harder and faster. Yeah, like you got yards. Coach Whiteman running down the sideline, yeah, Coach Benson high-stepping it down the sideline. So it's, it's exciting times right now to be an Alvin Yellow Jacket for the, for, the, for the team, for the coaches, for the band, for the drill team, for the cheerleaders, for – for everyone involved on Friday nights, it's, it's a really good time, uh, you know, to be out there. But um, just, Always more just, funner when you're winners. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right. This was the fumble I was uh, talking about a while ago. This was the first play of the second half. A uh, little, you know, miscommunication between the quarterback and running back. And Montava is right there on the spot, kind of fights the guy off and uh, shows off a little bit of his strength. He, he's one of our stronger kids, kind of bumps the running back off the ball right there and turns his body to the, to the kid and, and covers it up. And then, like I said, we went down and scored about three plays later uh, to kind of put the game away. So, Well, it uh, starts the second half off on a good note. Oh, absolutely. You know, you get the pick six right before the first, right at the end of the first half and then a fumble the first play of the second half. So that's back-to-back -back plays with turnovers for our defense. So that's been, that's been one of the biggest things for us this year is our defense has found ways to, to cause turnovers and get us the ball back in good field position. A little holding there. Got a little bit away. Got a little bit of the hold. And, oh, and that's, Ed, that's Eddie Parker. Uh, Eddie was an offensive guy for us last year. Played left tackle. Started six games or seven games as a sophomore. Uh, but this year we've moved him over to the defensive side of the ball. We got banged up a little bit early in the year. And uh, he's really done well at the nose guard position. He's fast, he's strong, and as you can see here, uh, you know, if he gets through, he can create some holding calls. But, uh, you know, he gets pressure on the quarterback initially. You got Wyatt there, you got Larry Vohacek there, you got Darius Wilson coming in on the play. Uh, just an overall team effort. There's a couple holds there. Somebody else is getting held as well. I don't know who that, I think that's Montavo again. But uh, defensive line's playing really, really well. They're, they're holding up offensive line, allowing our linebackers to run and make plays. Uh, you know, it, it's just great to see the whole team perform. Got a lot of white all around every play so far. 
every one. You've got a lot of white uniforms. Yes, sir. And that's that's the exciting part as a coach is seeing everybody play together and playing for each other. Well, it's always uh, more funner when you win. You know that, and everybody does, of course. Let's see, Daniel Bloom, three-yard touchdown. Jarvis had the three-yard, Ernst, 12 yards. Of course, the big one, 95 by Cade, and you're not going to probably hear the end of it from, from him, of course. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, like you say, and uh, it was a big game for the Yellow Jackets. It was a uh, sort of a momentum game. We're three in a row now. Got a big game coming up, Pearland, and we'll talk about that in a few moments now. Right. Well, Coach, as they say, uh, congratulations on the win, but the show must go on. So we got a lot ahead of us. Yes, sir. So uh, we do have some players of the week this week. Uh, you know, when you win on Friday night, um, you always, like we talked about earlier, you go back and you watch the film, and, and there's a lot of guys that showed up and made plays. And so uh, our offensive players of the week this week um, go to, all, to our four wide receivers and then also mm -hmm. one of our running backs. So you've got Elijah Harris, John Hoffman, Joseph Palermo, uh, our three of our wide receivers, they all blocked well on the perimeter the other night. And then Andrew Fuller is our fourth wide receiver um, right there who also performed well on the perimeter. And then Daniel Bloom played his best game. He's a three-year starter for us and uh, had a big touchdown run for us, had a two-point conversion play, uh, had the huge block on Deshaun's run. So uh, played a really <laughs> outstanding game on, on um, you know, at the running back position. And so those five guys got our offensive players of the week this week. Our defensive player of the week this week goes to Carson Robel. Um, cornerback, again, he, he, he went with number seven most of the night and uh, went one-on-one went -on -one with him and, and had a really good, good night. So uh, he's getting better and better. He's playing a little bit of safety, a little bit of corner, uh, but wherever we put him on the field, he's showing up making plays for us. So our, our special teams player of the week is our kicker, senior Caleb Reed, and uh, the, the ball is really coming off of his foot well right now. Good. He's punting, he's kicking. You know, I think he's got seven or eight touchbacks this year. Yeah. Um, you know, PATs. Uh, he's he, he's just he, he, anytime the ball is kicked, it just sounds different right now coming off his foot. So he had a great night kicking the other mm -hmm. night for us. Our offensive crush of the week. This is a big hit on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Elijah Harris had two crack blocks where he came in and uh, you know knocked a couple guys down, uh, which opened up some big plays. And then Daniel Bloom again had the huge cut on the long 52-yard right. run from Deshaun. So. Uh, those are our offensive crushes of the week. And then the big play of the week, I don't think this comes as any surprise, uh, but Cade Bingham's 95-yard touchdown return right before the half. And, uh, you know, that's, that's probably one of the biggest plays that this program's had in a long, long time. A long time. So, You're right. uh, very excited for Cade, but very excited for all of our kids. Very well-deserving. Well sure, and I'm sure it was 95 yards, but after he got through, maybe it was 105, something along that line. You know, I, the one thing I told him, I said, I I'm proud of you, but next time hand the ball to the official. You know, he, he kind of threw the ball up, but I don't think he really knew what to do after running 95 yards. So, uh, but, but, but a huge play for him, huge play for us. So. Well, look, the JV won 28 to 7. We've had both freshman teams, A and B, winning 8 to 6 and 42 to 8. The sub varsities are playing really, really well right now. Uh, our JV's 3 and 1, and then our freshman A and freshman B are both 3 and 1. So uh, they're finding ways to, to, to win down there and uh, finding ways to be successful. And that's one thing we talked about as a coaching staff going into this year is we wanted to really coach our sub varsities hard yeah. and teach them how to win. Uh, you know, winning is extremely hard to do. And so we're trying to teach those younger kids how to win at an early age and hope it carries over over the next three or four years. Well, now is now and the future is the future. And yeah, you've got to do that because you're not going to have a future if you don't really get with it. Yes, sir. So that's, you know, very, very pleased with our coaching staff, with our freshman coaches. Uh, they're doing an outstanding job with those freshman kids. And then our varsity coaches, we coach JV and varsity. And so uh, the JV kids are getting the exact same coaching that our varsity kids are getting. So it's, uh, it, it's showing in the results too. They're, they're really starting to play well together and they're having a lot of fun. And so at the, end, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. But like you said a while ago, uh, we got Pearland coming to town this Show's week. Show's gotta go on. Uh, you know, we're one and zero in district, but we told our kids Monday, we're back to the zero and zero mentality. Uh, last week's behind us and uh, we're not worried about next week, we're worried about this week. And so uh, we don't look at the district standings, we don't look at records, we, we're focused on, on trying to go one and zero this week. And so, uh, you know, it'll be a good atmosphere Friday night. Uh, Coach Tolis does a great job yeah. with their kids yeah. over there. Uh, and, and we're going to have our hands full, but, but we feel like they're going to have their hands full as well as, uh, you know, coming over here. Well, as you can see, 7 o'clock Memorial Stadium, Yellow Jackets versus Paraland. For Coach James Gage and myself, Carl Gurgis, we'll see you at the game Friday night. Go Jackets! Play, right? Jackets and and share the wealth tonight, block for each other, run for each other, protect each other, celebrate together, you hear me? Celebrate with each other. Here we go, family, on three, one, two, three, go! Let's walk out here, let's do this little song,
Okay. 